Good afternoon and welcome to today's panel discussion, the second in this Irish Hotels Federation Innovation Series in association with Electric Ireland. I'm Connor Brophy and in today's panel discussion we're going to be taking a look at some of the many ways hotels are innovating their product and guest experience in response to evolving customer expectations and indeed a changing tourism environment. And I'm delighted to be joined this afternoon by our panel, David Willis, B2B Digital Product Manager with Electric Ireland, Chris Austin, Group Director of Operations at the INUA Collection, Raquel Naboa, who's the founder of 50 Shades Greener, and Tom McDermott, Managing Director of Agility Hospitality, all of whom you'll see and hear as they begin to turn on their microphones and cameras for the discussion. Um, I wanted to start off, Chris, by, uh, by bringing you in here just to talk about how innovation is shaping hospitality and shaping the guest journey. Because you had an interesting phrase when we spoke the other day, and it's a truism, but uh, no less impactful for that, which is experience is the new experience. Just explain what you meant by that. Yeah, absolutely, Connor. Um, I suppose innovation in our business and, and looking at better ways of doing things is now a key driver of our strategy. Um, the guests are looking for more. They want more. We're heavily focused on guest experience and, and engaging with the guests and guest engagement. And we spend a lot of time through this lockdown with our learning and development team developing programs that are focused on engaging our hotel teams, not only with our own product, but helping them engage the guests with the product. And you know that experience, as you said, experience is the new experience. People want more, they wanna see more and they wanna do more. And we firmly believe guest experience is now the driver of loyalty. It's the key driver of loyalty and the key driver of return business. Um, we put a lot of work into this. We, 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 we have innovation teams in our hotels and I'll talk about that later, but we, we, we re-engineered our hotel lobbies in 2019, so they were more retail focused. Um, we're in the process of putting in a new dining concept across our group, which is, which is engaging. Um, our staff are engaged with the product and our guests will engage with the product. And yeah, engaging the guests, that guest experience really now for me is the forefront of innovation in hospitality. Mm -hmm. Tom, you, you must be seeing a lot of good examples here, I, I hope, of, of hotels that are doing that, that are innovating and are adding to that guest experience and, and have taken advantage, unfortunately, in the most challenging circumstances of the time available to reimagine and rethink uh, and re-up what the customer, what the guest can expect when they arrive. Yeah, absolutely, Connor. I think uh, the last uh, 12 to 15 months or so have seen some remarkable innovations in our industry. You know, from, you know, the innovative use of outdoor space, you know, the rise of coffee shops, etc. You know, I don't think there's a horse box in the country that hasn't been converted to a coffee shop at the moment. You know, great innovation there. You know, the, uh, the, the, the f and creations, you know, the afternoon tea in the box, takeaway pints, cocktail kits, all this sort of stuff, you know, has been phenomenal. But uh, another thing that I think has been, has been great and very innovative has been the use of social media content. And I think uh, our, our hotels and restaurants, et cetera, got very creative with the social media content and really featured some of the individuals and some of the people who have been uh, putting, the, putting, putting the show together as it were in the hotels and getting a bit behind the scenes. And that's very, very interesting for customers to see. You know, there's uh, lots of stuff like the, you know, the hybrid meetings and, you know, daylight rooms for remote workers, uh, putting, just staying up to date with current trends of, you know, sea swimming and, you know, putting activities together around that kind of activity-based uh, 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 stays and trips when we can, but also putting things like plant-based uh, menus together and, and that sort of stuff. So a lot of innovation over the last few months, and uh, I'm sure it's going to continue. Raquel, Tom touches on something there just in terms of engagement and, and especially the use, I guess, of social media and, and other uh, platforms to target guests and to keep that connection going. That's something that we've seen more and more of, and I don't see that going away anytime soon. What's your view? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, the use of all online resources has been heightened by the pandemic, and that includes Zoom meetings, social media, digital conferences. And yes, we have seen signs of, you know, really early adapters that have really used social media to its full potential. Um, and it's really, it, it's actually, it, it, it's funny, touching in something that Chris said as well about the engagement with the people. Um, and, and those that have been more successful are those that are showing their 
their teams, you know, that are actually highlighting members of their team and what they're doing. Um, and that's something that hadn't happened in the industry before. I don't think we ever put maybe enough emphasis on highlighting those people behind the scenes and, and those people that are really allowing us all to have this hospitality and tourism industry, which is our employees, it's, it's the workforce of the industry. You made a point in that regard the other day, Raquel, when we had a chance for, for a brief chat where you talked about, you know, taking a broader view of innovation, recognizing the fact that in any hotel you have 10, 20, 50, 100 different minds or maybe more that you can tap into, all of whom will have great ideas. So I guess it's not so much just about showcasing the people behind the scenes, but actually tapping into them and showcasing their ideas. Yeah, absolutely. It's about really bringing them into every aspect of the business, including what what should happen in the next few years, you know, and particularly in the hospitality industry, we're blessed to have a, a huge range of people, you know, from the younger generations to those that have been with us for years. Um, and there is so much creativity within that workforce that sometimes is untapped, you know, um, and we are seeing more and more hotels now, you know, having suggestion boxes for their staff and really asking the staff what, what kind of projects they want to get behind. And when you do that, I mean, it, they just make your life as, as the general manager or owner much easier because um, they feel empowered by the fact that you're taking on their idea and they're going to run with it. So it's not something that you have to think of yourself implement yourself and train your staff to do it it's something that you know staff can just really run with um and and set you aside from 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 the other hotels in the area david when we talk about guest expectation and we talk about innovation i think there's there's a crucial point here isn't there in that the the level of expectation is so much higher now particularly in terms of digitalization and what somebody expects to see and be able to tap into you know there, there are things that we might even a year ago have talked about as being innovative but they're now just expected yeah i mean we see that from uh, the the world of kind of being on 24 hours seven days a week that um we can see that our systems people log in from from home um uh, three o'clock in the morning or, you know, on a, a Sunday afternoon or whatever. And there's an expectation that the access they have to information and data is exactly the same then as it would be if they were doing it during normal business hours. There's no such thing really as outside business hours. So whether that's a hotel just looking to access its bills or somebody wanting information about energy efficiency and steps they can take to, to save money um, or access to information on, on grants or whatever it might be, everything is expected to be available all the time no matter when, you know, there's no such thing of, as, as oh, it's the end of my shift, so I, I, I won't be looking at uh, information mm -hmm. online. No, that's exactly when they are looking for information. Um, and the, the expectation is that everything is accessible digitally. So, you know, you don't have to have a, a customer service representative answering a phone. It has to be available through the web or on an app. Um, and that expectation shifted them unlikely to go back. But you also still have to cater for uh, you know, some of our customers who just don't want to, to interact digitally. So, so there has to be other options there too. Um, but uh, yes, expectations have shifted and there's no going back. And whether you're a utility provider or a hotel or a, a tourism service provider, the expectation is you'll be able to provide that information digitally all the time. Mm. For, from an Electric Ireland perspective, then, and specifically looking at the, the energy aspect of things for, for a moment, David, it does seem that more and more people want to know What's my footprint going to be? What kind of energy usage am I going to be demanding? And that, that applies as much to my hotel stay as it does uh, to, to what I'm doing in, in my own home in, in the residential environment. Yeah, and it, it's interesting. Um, fortunately, we had, we had put in place a number of services before the, the dreaded C word uh, hit uh, last year. But um, uh, those services like uh, our SME Premium Insights allow people to compare their business to other similar businesses and see how much energy they're consuming. So there's that, uh, that thing of, yes, you, you could, if you're a larger hotel or a chain, get in a, a consultant um, and that's great. They will give you a, a very personalized view of where you can save energy, but um, you also should be able to access that information through our uh, apps online to say, well, actually I'm not going to, to pay a consultant to tell me, but at least from the information you can have about me, my, energy consumption telling me roughly what areas I should be concentrating on, whether that's lighting or heating or the leisure center or uh, cooking in the kitchen. 
Um, and we can we can get a benchmark just from people's energy consumption and data about um, where they are versus where they might be able to get to. And there's savings to be made there for sure. Um, but also uh, following up on something that Raquel said, um, we found that it used to be that there was a designated person who was supposed to be interested in this kind of information. Uh, but now um, it really is shared out across the, the businesses and, and across hotel, for example. So getting kitchen staff involved in energy or uh, cleaning staff involved in energy makes sense because they have a different perspective and they will have contributions to make and understand that you know leaving the heaters on uh, or the the gas in the in the kitchen for cooking uh, makes sense for one reason you know it, it allows them to be flexible but it does consume energy and is costing money uh, so you know they will have suggestions around things to do to to improve that so it, it does make sense to actually get those back back of house whatever you want to call that uh, staff uh, involved and make sure that they also contribute. It's not just the, the purview of mm. a, a manager or a sustainability expert. Um, it's everybody's business. I, I'm going to bring in, in, you in here, Tom, because that, that's a really good point, isn't it? And I know it cuts to the heart of what you're doing and that if we're talking about innovation, we also need to look at process innovation. And there isn't a single process in any business, not least the hotel, that can't be improved and sometimes the best source of advice on how to improve is, is, is the horse's mouth. It's the person who actually is most impacted by that process. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, that, was, uh, that was really good, good point made there. It's about the people that are doing the job every single day. You know, if you're 10 feet away from the job every single day, you know where the little improvements can be made. You know where the problems are arising. You know the things that are affecting a customer. And I guess from a, from a, from a data perspective, one thing that's, that's uh, of value is... And, and, and to recognize is the people need a scoreboard of some kind. They need the data, need the information, need to know if I'm winning or if I'm losing. And that's very, very important um, to know if they're on the right track or not. But, you know, there's one great uh, phrase. I think it was uh, one of these management gurus, Peter Drucker, said that culture eats strategy for breakfast. And uh, it's great having the strategies and all the plans of what you're going to do. But nothing is achieved unless the culture in the organization is right. And, uh, you know, where, where I'm coming from, from a continuous improvement culture, it's very important that the leaders are able to create that environment where team members feel empowered and are able to challenge a, 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 a convention, challenge a status quo, challenge a process, um, what's important to them, and be able to feel, feel safe and feel rewarded when they come up with those suggestions for improvement. Um, but the, the, the team members are absolutely vital to that. When you've got empowered team members, of course, you know, you're going to have people who are able to, uh, to deliver much, much better service to the, to, to the customers and much uh, better, stronger, uh, healthier bottom line also. So I think the, the key is the culture has to be right and then uh, everything else will follow after that. For, for that to work, Raquel, I suppose one of the things that we need to embrace is if you're talking about innovation, some things bluntly just aren't going to work. Um, you have to be willing to take risks, but by taking them, you also have to acknowledge that some of them aren't going to work out. They're going to fail and you need to learn quickly and move on. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the first thing I want to say is, is music to my ears, but what David and Tom are saying in terms of data and benchmarking and involving the team and that culture of, you know, sustainability across all members of the organization, because that's exactly what needs to happen. Um, but yeah, in terms of innovation, I, I mean, I, I've made probably 20 big mistakes in the last four years running my own business, but you know, it, it's how you view those mistakes and how you learn from them. And a mistake that is made because you're trying to create something brand new that doesn't exist is not a mistake. It's simply a little setback that will help you adjust that process or, 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 or that plan that you had to, to, to bring it to a different direction. Um, but we can't, you know, there is no innovation without mistakes. It can't happen because you are creating, innovation means creating something completely new. Um, and, and, and that's not easy. Um, but to me, I guess the best lesson I've learned in the last few years running my own business is not to be afraid of, of any crazy idea. And my crazy ideas probably come around three or four in the morning when I wake up with something and I just write it in a note post on the side of my bed. And sometimes I wake up the next day and some of those ideas are thrown in the bin straight away. But most of the time I do challenge them. I try to put them in place and, you know, 80% of the time, you know, they, they bring good rewards. So yeah, I think when it comes to innovation, it's about 
really you know thinking outside the box and 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 not just trying to repeat something that is done but but to 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 really look at things with a different view Chris, I see you nodding away as both Tom uh, and Raquel have been talking there. Um, there's obviously a lot of that that chimes with your, your own experience. Absolutely. I mean, and David, and look, David touched on something there about energy saving initiatives and companies, and it's a muddy playing field out there. There's a lot of companies now trying to sell all businesses, specifically hospitality. You know, we have these tools where we'll save you energy and you know, I would encourage people to actually speak with their energy provider because they are very, very knowledgeable in that area. And, and genuinely, they want you to save money on energy. I mean, metering, as Tom said, you know, that Lean Six Sigma approach, measuring and monitoring and seeing where are you spending energy? We, we put meters across all of our hotels through this lockdown and we meet a key areas of the business and we actually set thresholds, daily thresholds on energy consumption. So there's alarms going off to mobile phones if somebody left all the ballroom lights on in a hotel overnight. And, you know, we've done a lot of work on that. And look, to touch on the team effort, you're right. It's a total team effort. You've got to engage your teams. And, you know, we're, we're struggling. We're all employing now. And a lot of employees coming into the industry are, are asking, what are your sustainability goals? What are you doing to save the planet? And, and our customers as well, we were tendering for a piece of business yesterday and the question came up, what is your company's strategy on sustainability? And you know, people are asking those questions now because it's at the forefront of everything that they do and it has to be at the forefront of what we do. Um, so yeah, no, I fully agree uh, with all the comments there. David, when Chris says uh, talk to your energy provider, I assume that's, that's music to your ears. So, so let's do just that then, because I know something that you've been very strong in is if we're talking about energy efficiency and we're talking about sustainability, it can't just sit in one bucket in one part of the organization. It has to go across everything you do. The booking systems, everything needs to be integrated in a, in a way and they need to all be pointed in the same direction if you're really going really gonna to make a go of this properly. Yes, and I was thinking that when Chris was talking about, uh, you know, sensors and monitors and, and, and setting uh, targets and alarms, uh, you know, we're, we're going to see more and more of this being joined up. Um, it's already happening and it will happen more over the next few years that, you know, your booking system really needs to be talking to your energy management system, ideally, so that if you have a, a vacant room that, you know, you're not consuming energy in there, if you have uh, guests arriving, that your room is either being preheated or pre-cooled as appropriate or whatever, you know, I think we'll see a lot more of that joined up thinking. Um, and certainly, yeah, in terms of, of talking to energy providers, we, Chris is dead, right? Like we, we have targets to, to, to meet in terms of encouraging our customers to use less energy, counterintuitive as that might, might seem, you know, to say to, to a supplier, please, please, you know, use less of our product. But um, what we do, we have we've government targets in that area and all, all energy suppliers are, are really being pushed to, to ensure that they have a, a plan around that. Um, and I do think there is something there around, like there's been an industry certainly in the last 10 years around setting energy savings. Uh, you know, everybody needs to be putting in LED lighting because that's the right thing to do. That was a huge, you know, um, feeding frenzy almost of uh, consultants and contractors uh, uh, offering that. But objectively, your energy provider, uh, Electric Garden, would be able to see and, and can see for the CR hotel customers, how much energy they're using, how is that different from others? Um, are they using it when they don't need to be, you know, really people aren't excited by energy, particularly unless they're, you know, uh, very, very focused on that. But when you talk about waste and people wasting money, then they get interested. And, um, and I think we do, we need to kind of reframe that conversation instead of being about how much kilowatt hours, how many units does your refrigerator in the kitchen consume? It's, you know, how much of that is wasted and doesn't need to be consumed is really how the conversation should be. And, and, and you know, I'm sure the, the, the others would agree that uh, if you talk in terms of waste and money wasted, people soon uh, pick up their ears and, and, and listen. And um, unless you can build that conversation in, particularly in the hospitality industry, into a kind of a, a narrative, a conversation around the guest experience, you know, the guests want to know that you're green, but they also want to know that you're not wasting money on, on them when there's no benefit, to them, you know, and, and that is something that uh, energy in particular, you could say, well, uh, wasted energy is of no benefit to the customer whatsoever. So, you know, it's something you can easily target, whereas cutting costs in other areas may well have an impact 
on the on the customer and that's not something we want or, or anybody wants to encourage Tom, I imagine this must be coming up all the time in the conversations that, that you're having. Uh, can you give us some practical advice? Though? Wh- where's the starting point if you're looking at, okay, sustainability is not going away. It's a core issue for all of us. Um, where do I need to start and what are the things that I need to have right to make it work? I think the first thing to mention is that, that we've got a unique opportunity now, probably for the first time in our history, with so many new staff and new managers and new team members coming into our businesses, into hospitality from other industries, from other hospitality businesses, we're getting this influx of fresh thinking. We're getting these people who've got new ideas. And even if they're from other industries, then fantastic, we get a different perspective. Very often we're very, very much focused on the people that are you know, more like ourselves and maybe don't see the wood for the trees. So I think a lot of what I'm uh, uh, talking to people about is about in- embracing that Uh, diversity, embracing that new ideas and making small steps every single day um, to make improvements. You know, for me, you know, continuous improvement trumps uh, innovation in a way, because if you're able to make small steps every single day, collectively over a long period of time, um, you're making improvements. Um, Innovation, as Raquel said, is doing something completely, completely new and starting with a clean sheet of paper. And that can be a bit more challenging in some cases, um, but still very, very relevant, very, very important. But I think the smaller, the approach of the small steps um, every day of doing better tomorrow than you've done today is, uh, is really worthwhile. Raquel, I know you're, you're itching to get in here as the conversation turns to, to sustainability. I can see you're practically jumping through the screen at me there, so <laughs> I, I, I won't leave you waiting any longer. Um, one of the, the points that I know you're, you're, you, you will be particularly strong and you'll want to drill home here is um, there are certain things that are, are minimum expectations and that you're not going to be looking for credit for things that people expect you to do anyway. But at the other extreme, what we want to avoid at all costs is any sense that people are, are greenwashing. Better not to do it at all than not to do it properly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, only last week I was reading a article from the Times, I think it was, where it stated that um, a European report had identified that 42% of companies in Europe are actually greenwashing. And, you know, I think greenwashing to me anyways in the future is it's going to become really... The, the new not doing anything about the planet so right now you know you have a choice to either continue as you are or to continue but with another commitment to reduce your impact on the environment um those that choose option two are kind of you know or early adapters are probably going to be in a much better position in the next couple of years um but if you choose to do nothing about it the worst thing you could do is you know write an environmental policy so that it looks like you are doing something um, because when customers identify greenwashing, they really, really move away from it and they will lose all trust really in your organization, which is something that we all need to avoid. Um, but in terms of sustainability, one of the best ways that you can avoid greenwashing is your environmental data. And to me, data is so powerful, all types of data, but particularly environmental data. If you're able to calculate your green key performance indicators and your carbon emissions, and you publish those in your websites, in your social channels, in your guest folders, tell your customers, regardless at what point of your green journey you are, even if you're at the very start, you know, calculating that first impact on the environment of where you are right now and where you want to be in the next three years, that's really powerful information. And that's what customers want to see. They want to see what the energy use for the hotel is, what the water use, what the waste production is. Um, and, you know, we need to start kind of moving away from the old messages, um, you know, help us save the planet by reusing your towels. Nobody's going to save the planet by reusing a towel. So it's better to come from a place of transparency and saying, you know, if you reuse your towels, you'll help us reduce water and energy use. Simple, done, you know, um, or even, you know, you can go a bit further and actually calculate with your laundry facilities how much water, how much energy it takes for one lot of washing and put that in your put that in your in, in, in your guest messaging. Giving them real data, I guess, would um, allow that perception that you are actually managing your environmental impact rather than just having a policy without a plan behind it. And to the point you were making earlier as well, the level of, of, of staff buy-in and making sure that staff are experts in these things and they understand, you know, the locally sourced ingredients, the provenance of the food, you know, the, the sustainability at a community level as well that factors into everything that the hotel is doing. Mm. 
Yeah, I, I think again, you know, when it comes to our team, they are they are the people on the floor all the time. They are the people using that energy. They are the people producing that waste to a certain extent. And so, you know, unless what's what's known at, in a management level is sipped down to to the team, then you know you're really not going to have a successful green program. But even things like Chris was touching on this at the very beginning of the conversation, um, you know, engaging the staff with even other products outside in your local community so for example sending your team um, to do a guided walk um, of your nearby area it would really it bring to me brings a lot of benefits between them would be like that your your staff then would be a lot more comfortable speaking to your customers about that experience um, and second that will create better um, relationships with with all those other tourism providers in your area and third of all it's a great bonding experience for your team um, and when you bond with your team or when, when your core workers your productivity really increases so you know you're, you're kind of touching a lot a lot of um, um, areas of sustainability when it comes to people and community by actually having your 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 team experience what your guest is going to experience, mm-hmm. I guess. Chris, what's been your experience at Ainua in the in the sustainability journey? Yeah, I mean, look, we love sustainability. It's hugely important for us. We were we were humbled recently. We won an Excellence in Sustainability Award at the National Facilities Management, and we were up against companies like Anpost and BAM, you know, and, and we walked away with, with the Excellence Award. We started in 2019. We, we started working with Green Hospitality, and, and Raquel, I know you, you work very closely with Morris as well, and I think bringing a partner on board is really important because if you're setting strategic goals for your sustainability process, you need somebody to help you along. So we started off by, look, we're gonna achieve echo accreditation. Um, We achieved that in 12 months. A few important things on that and and greenwashing actually is a term I hadn't heard and I'm, I'm hugely interested to explore that, but we committed to buying green electricity in 2019 as a group and that came at a cost initially there was there was an increase in cost but now actually it's cost neutral and i would encourage everyone to speak to their energy provider and buy green electricity we're in the process actually yesterday of exploring and we're about to sign a renewable gas contract so now i've gone to the next step or we have where we're committing to be buying renewable gas for three years So we're moving towards carbon neutrality. That's very, very difficult. But I think every hotelier, every hospitality business in the country now needs to be saying, why are we making that decision? What is the impact on the environment? And how is that going to help us towards our sustainability goals? And look, as I said, there's there's 50 Shades Greener, obviously, Raquel, there's 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 green hospitality. There's there's companies that are very, very experienced in that marketplace and, and can really help businesses to move towards. So yeah, hugely important. David, talk to us about renewables then as, as Chris has introduced it into the conversation. Um, what's the picture looking like there in terms of you know getting to that uh, zero carbon or even carbon negative, dare we say, uh, point, which you know is not only going to be um, an aspiration for a lot of businesses, but really is going to be the subject of binding targets under the Climate Action Bill when it becomes law. Yes, and, and it's interesting to hear, hear Chris saying that. Um, we're seeing that, that a good few of our, our customers more widely in hotels particularly are, are interested in uh, going 100% um, renewable on their supply. Uh, the other thing I think that is interesting is that they're not doing it in isolation. And I think that comes back around to this, maybe what Raquel was saying too, that, that if you just said, well, all I'm going to do is go, go renewable and, and just have a renewable uh, supply, I think that would be missing missing the point. Like Chris and like other hoteliers, the, the Europe Hotel in Killarney is, is a recent example. They've just done 100% renewable, but they didn't do it in isolation. They're doing it in conjunction with a number of other steps. So they're doing it, in, they're, like they're trying to reduce the amount of energy they need first, and then look at where they're meeting that from with the, the energy supply. And I think that's, that's a, a really important principle that you look at where you can put the waste, where you can concentrate on, on parts, and you build out a plan from that. You know, nobody expects any hotel, large or small, a chain or individual, to be able to tackle everything all at once, especially in the current climate. Um, but if you can build out a plan over several years, we're going to do this, we're concentrating in the kitchen this year, we're concentrating on the leisure centre the year after, we're looking at the conference facilities the year after that, whatever it might be. Uh, 
but you're reducing first or you're aiming to reduce first the energy that you use. And then you're looking at, well, where am I meeting that from? Is that from a 100% renewable um, electricity supply or gas supply? Uh, and uh, is it incorporating a bit of microgeneration as well? Uh, so you have some on-site renewable, but, but first, by all means, first look at where are you wasting the energy? Because otherwise you're just, you're buying in green energy for something that you don't actually need. Um, so, so those things need to go together. Um, and certainly the future is, is looking like that more and more uh, medium and, and, and even some small um, businesses, uh, including the hotel industry, um, will, will be more active participants in that. So we, we've seen that over the last few years that um, we have an online application whereby you can you know, uh, freeze your, your gas um, prices or you can look to, to hedge uh, further out for larger for larger companies um, you know people weren't interested in that a few years ago they would have just said well I'll leave that to somebody else but but now instead of just being the very large industries that are doing that it's coming down to smaller and smaller businesses so there's a there's a sense in which right down to to uh, individual consumers you know everybody running and working in a hotel uh, is also a consumer a residential energy consumer and um, everybody has some interest, even if it's only a niggle at the back of their mind that they should be doing something to be green. Therefore, they're wanting to at least participate in some way in the energy industry and that exchange of, well, where am I getting it from? How much am I using? Like I said before, it's not that it is super interesting to people, but they do have a sort of a, a nagging feeling that they ought to be doing something about it and participating in some way. And now, partly because of the stuff we talked about earlier, that they're kind of 24-7, uh, digitization of these things and partly because of the, the drive towards sustainability across all the areas of life whether it's transport or, or um, home or business but uh, there is an opportunity to participate talk to your supplier of course is, is the first step in that but but like I said it should be a joined up effort not just one thing uh, supply and consuming reducing waste and looking ahead to what you know new improvements when I'm changing out my air conditioning for, for other reasons, maybe because of COVID, shouldn't I be doing that in a way that is green? Shouldn't I be choosing an option there that is greener than the other option? Absolutely, you know, so, so let's join those things up together. Tom, we've been talking very deliberately and, and pointedly and with method about innovation in its, in its broadest sense and not confining ourselves to a discussion that's specifically technology led, but at the same time, I don't want to ignore the impact that technology is having and is going to have on the sector. Um, just talk to us a little bit about where you're seeing uh, and, and where, you, where, where you see the trends heading in terms of good deployment of technology, where it's delivering value for, for, you, for your customers, for your clients. Yeah, so, so I've got a, maybe a different view on technology. Um, I guess that technology should be something that you may not necessarily see, but is taking away some of the some of the boring, some of the mundane, repeatable tasks that people do every day. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you never want, we're in a hospitality business, you never want to remove that customer interface and uh, the face-to-face -face, uh, hospitality that we're so famous for. Um, but if you're going to have somebody that's checking into, uh, uh, checking into a hotel, they're interacting with the, with the personal reception, or they have a choice perhaps to be able to go straight to their room by checking in beforehand using their phone, that gives the guest a choice and some will choose the face-to-face uh, -face option some will choose the, uh, the the automated option through the app on the phone but what's happening behind the scenes could be automated you know some of the transactions that take place on on on, on the front desk let's just take front desk for as an example you know um you know i, I worked with a hotel who was spending um, 90 minutes per receptionist per day per shift i should say of completing paperwork to close their shift on reception and about 60 minutes of that time was absolute waste of time that a lot of it wasn't needed anymore, but a lot of it could also be automated. So I think automation should be definitely an enabler, um, should be helping to make the, the customer journey smoother. Um, but I don't foresee when you're going to have this uh, 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 replacement of, of human beings um, taking place uh, where the customer's concerned. I do however see that in the future, we're going to see a lot more robotics uh, in hotels. You know, there's already hotels that are using uh, uh, robotics back of house and uh, from hoovering of uh, ballrooms and uh, even 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 bedrooms to transporting materials, laundry, 
uh, garbage around around the facility. So a lot of that's coming coming in, and I can see that happening uh, in a few years. Chris, give give us your own perspective on what you've seen in terms of if we if we can take that team on a little bit from what Tom has been talking about there, and um, the sort of systems and the sort of technology that you're using that are, I guess, making people's lives easier and allowing them to devote more of their time to looking after the guests. Yeah, and it, there's a lot of technology out there right now. Um, it's really important to look at what will add value to your business, what will either add value to the guest experience, or as Tom said, will add efficiency to the hotel operation. You know, there's a lot of hotels implementing guest ordering apps. So you're taking the human touch out of a guest experience. There is a marketplace for that internationally and in key cities, but it's not, it's not in the Irish marketplace currently in our opinion. Um, as Tom said there, guests want personal interaction and that that Cape Miller Fulcher, that, that Irish hospitality that we're famous for, we can't replace that with technology. Um, back of house, look, we, we've implemented a few things and back to state sustainability, which Raquel will smile, you know, we took on a tool called Press Reader. It's an online magazine and newspaper app. And we took newspapers and magazines and print out of our hotels in 2019. And Look, there's a financial saving there, which is actually quite significant, but there's also a look, we're not throwing newspapers in the bin anymore. And all of our hotel guests and actually our employees now have access to a, a, a library of thousands of local, regional, national, international publications. Um, back to what Tom was saying about uh, automating processes. Um, we, um, we looked at our HR processes. We work with a company called Alchemy and, and, and look, They've revolutionized the way that we do business back of house. So all of our HR procedures now, all of our onboarding, our contracts, all of our HR um, compliance paperwork, it's all done online. There's no big filing cabinet in our offices anymore. Our employees, they're clocking in and out on an app. Now, they have to be in proximity of the hotel Wi-Fi before they clock in, but that's taken a huge amount of inefficient processes out of the business. And as Tom said, you know, we're not having to start completing checklists anymore and printing bits of paper. It's all done on this app. Um, so we've brought that in. It also forecasts, it manages payroll, it manages our finance function. So we're looking at where we're inefficient in our operation and we're looking at technology will fit into that space. Um, and yeah, hugely revolutionary. I'm really interested, as Tom said, you know, robotics and having a a Hoover running around the ballroom, hoovering the ballroom 24 seven, instead of a member of staff spending six hours overnight going up and down, hoovering the carpet. I'm really interested to start looking at that kind of technology now. Raquel, crucial to all this is, you know, once, once you're automating systems, once you're bringing in the technology, be it in sustainability or any other area, you're then tapping into a seam of, of rich data. And it's important that you recognize that and that you, you, you analyze it and that you use it accordingly to improve the business and improve ultimately the guest experience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as, as I said before, data, it's, it's, it's kind of your, is your benchmark. You know, it's, it's the only way that you have to, to really prove to yourself, to your customers and the stakeholders, whether you're, you've moved from point A to point B and whether you have improved or not. Um, I really agree with Chris on this one. I think like that it's a very fine line, particularly in the hospitality sector, not to lose that touch of personal touch of guests interacting with people um but yeah I, I i also love the idea of the robotic hoover i'd nearly buy one myself for my house to be honest uh, but yeah we you know we can't I, I love automations you know i run an online company and i try and automate everything we do but except for that part where there is the connection to the customer you know that's the one thing you know oh god if i see another website with one of those chat boots when you have to ask a question and they reply a general oh that that drives me absolutely mad um and so i do feel that anything that is customer related needs to still remain as it is with that personal touch of human interaction um, but it's about it's about, you know, picking and choosing those parts of technology that suit us best. You know, all the sub meat range that Chris and David were talking about that, you know, that, that, that David provides with his company and Chris has implemented. It's huge. I mean, it allows us to become proactive rather than the reactive. Um, you know, before in the past, when I was a green manager in Hotel Dulan, I used to get excited to get a waste bill so that I could see what my data was for that past period. 
But now if you have meters and you're checking your data on a daily basis, you know, you can actually estimate what your electricity bill is going to be without having to wait for it to arrive. And that allows you really to be very proactive and to take action now rather than wait another month until your bill arrives to realize that something has gone wrong, maybe within your energy consumption. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 a love hate relationship with technology and, and automation. It's it's really good for some things, but we need to make sure it doesn't replace that that people people touch that that we have in Irish hospitality and Tom if we're talking people and I'm interested in your take on this because we've we've brushed over it a couple of times you know the, the the lean and six sigma approaches but at the end of the day key in all of that is making sure that that you know that people embrace the change and they're the ones ultimately who are going to be implementing these these, these changes tell us about how that works in practice yeah, so it's it's absolutely vital that the uh, the, the people in the organisation are bought into a, a lean or a Six Sigma process. So it starts off with the leader, and the first thing the leader should be doing is looking in the mirror and saying, "Am I the person who's open minded enough and be uh, be, be 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 mature enough and uh, leave my ego at the door? I'm going to look for feedback from team members. I'm going to examine this process. I'm going to interrogate it because I know it's going to be better for my customer. You know, all of these." These changes in processes uh, uh, w- that use that lean, success, lean and Six Sigma use very successfully, even in hospitality, are all 100% driven by the customer. If they're not driven by the customer, then it's it's not going to it's not going to have the impact that you're going to be looking for from a from a revenue point of view or a team engagement point of view. But the the culture, I keep coming back to the culture of how important it is, and that this safe space is is created by the by by the leaders. And you know, as a as a as a former general manager, I know the last thing that I wanted was somebody coming into the hotel with a clipboard under their arm and saying, well, here, I'm going to have a look at your processes and I'm going to see what you can do a little bit better. But having that maturity to be able to take the advantage of an external fresh pair of eyes to be able to look critically at processes creates real gold. And uh, and, and the team members also are, are, are part of that, because if you ask them, um, they'll probably tell you uh, where, the, where, the, where the inefficiencies are. Um, I, uh, I heard a, you know, there was a recent um, a quote uh, on a, a podcast by Toto Wolf uh, recently, and he said that we shouldn't be victims of our own perception. And I love that. And I think if we were, if we, if we were to listen to that as general managers, as hotel managers, you know, and, and, and live by that, we would have a much broader view and be able to look at much more creative, uh, efficient ways uh, to run the business, but focus on the customer. I'm keeping one eye carefully on the clock here because I want to make sure that we run a lean and efficient uh, webinar and that we don't end I'm up running you. over our, our allotted time. But um, <laughs> I think it's, it's a good moment maybe as, as you talk about that, Tom, to, to do a little bit of crystal ball gazing. I might go, go around the houses here and, and ask everybody for their, their kind of final talk before we wrap up. But I'll start with you, David. And I really wanted to get to look, what's your vision of, of, of where the sector is going to be and what, what it's going to look like in, in five years beyond the fact that it seems like, judging by the participants on, on this call, everybody's going to have robotic uh, robotic Ubers in the ballroom. Yeah, I mean, I, I think cherry picking a little bit of something that everybody said, <laughs> uh, which, uh, sorry guys, that's the, the vendors are going first, but, but um, uh, I, I do think like we're going to see, yes, automation and digitization as we've talked about, where it is useful um, so perhaps not so much on the customer facing side but on the staff uh, facing side definitely greater greater um, automation yes but um, like I, I can see that this area of innovation and sustainability is going to start to dovetail more neatly than it has in previous years uh, around the customer experience so rather than being about, oh, we need to reduce our, our energy uh, consumption or we need to um, reduce our waste to be, to be greener or to be more sustainable, it'll be what aspects of that can we take that will actually have a positive impact on the customer experience. So I'm thinking of things like, um, I know TIFCO put in a, a, a just recently with us a, an electric bus at the Crown Plaza in Dublin to ferry customers from the airport to the, to the hotel and, and vice versa. So the first impact on customers is that they are interacting with the hotel is, is with a, a green, you know, low emissions or no emissions transport. Um, I know a hotel that, that I visited and they put in um, LED lighting, which is very common in, in a lot of hotels now because it's more energy efficient, but they had done it in a way that meant they could have total flexibility of their lighting in their conference and ballroom areas. 
So it was actually being sold as a, as a positive for people renting or, or hiring out those spaces that you can, you know, fit in with co- corporate branding, colors, you can feel, you know. So it's those kind of marriage of customer experience with the technology and the, the sustainability aspects. I see more and more of that coming over the next few years. And yes, I do see that there'll be more of that micro-generation that we touched off earlier um, coming too, but only if it's useful. Um, for other aspects. So yes, it's you know appropriate because we've got space to put uh, um, sort of panels uh, and customers want to see that, but you do it and marry it in a way that improves the customer experience rather than is just to tick a box or to, to help with the sustainability aspect. So Chris, to you then, looking ahead five years, where do you think we're going to be? Look, I think we have a period of recovery. Um, we know that's there. We, we need to recover. It's going to be a tough road through the next sort of 18 months, 24 months. Um, I think we need to get back to doing what we did best and what we do best, which is that Irish hospitality, that engagement. Um, and I think that's really going to be what the customer is looking for. And, you know, training, putting a lot of investment now into front of house teams that they they know local, they sell local. And as Raquel was saying, they promote local and whether that's a small brewery or a, a small farm or a small local historic site, it's about getting back into what's good in the locality of a hotel for us. Um, definitely sustainability. I mean, that's hugely important that everything we do. Uh, and we're now starting to look importantly, you know, weddings, functions, it's a huge piece of business for hotels, but we're starting to look ahead now to what people are going to want five, 10 years down the line. And we and I knew, I believe that that demand is going to change exponentially. You know, that gala five course, heavy wedding meal, people are going to look for alternative venues, alternative products. And I think hospitality needs to start looking ahead because if we're standing there with our big menu pack in five years time, we'll be wondering why nobody's booking our ballroom we need to start thinking ahead so look i think slow and steady i agree with tom you know when we start talking about plant-based food versus meat boats and i know we had a conversation i think that'll come slowly as customer demands come in but at the minute we're we've got some good vegan stuff you know good vegetarian food but we are looking ahead we're conscious of what's on the horizon Um, a couple of interesting takes there, I guess, in one sense, a a, a re-emphasis on what we do well and, and, you know, making sure that we stick to the knitting on that, but also, I guess, you know, taking account of how trends are are going to drive us and the different directions they're going to take us over that period between now and 2026. Where do you think we're we're going to be? Um, I think that we're we're over the next few years, next two or three years at least, you know, we're not going to be growing by increased revenue. We're going to be growing by efficiencies of making our, our processes more efficient so we're able to drive better value for the customers. I think that's going to be a big focus over the next, uh, the short term, next two or three years at least. And hopefully after that, uh, revenues will be in a position to grow. But I think therefore that the, the focus needs to be on the customer, maintaining that customer interface, and um, certainly identifying using the data, all the data we've got in hotels. We've got uh, I heard a statistic the other day that uh, every 100 bedroom hotel uh, generates 5,000 data events a day. Um, so the massive amount of data that's taking place, we need to harness that data and more importantly, know what to do with it and be able to um, solve the customer's problems using it. I think systems as well need to be seamless and um, the integration between systems and all the, um, the latest IT um, stacks and data stacks need to be investigated further to make sure that data flows between the systems so we get the better insights to be able to deliver better value for the customers. Things like hybrid meetings, I think, are here to stay. I think we'll have a situation where we'll have the main meeting taking place with a, with a, with a live audience and speakers, etc. But there's also going to be this uh, audience who can be anywhere in the world styling into meetings, and that's going to be a thing uh, of the future. Um, you know, I like, uh, I'm, I'm delighted, uh, uh, Raquel, like the uh, robotics idea, you know, um, it doesn't stop from hoovering floors, you know, they've got robots that make pizzas, that uh, do burgers, that even uh, there's one called Tipsy in New York and Las Vegas who uh, who mixes cocktails in a bar and it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic uh, source of entertainment just itself. Um, but one other thing that we haven't spoken about, um, just to leave you on, is the online reputation that we've got is going to be even more important as we go forward. And um, the speed and quality of response to the guest 
um, ultimately um, very, very important. Everything is done in the palm of your hand uh, these days, as we know. Um, 84% of, of, uh, of uh, uh, millennials are using reviews to be able to determine where they're going to stay, where they're going to go on holiday. And, uh, and, and that's, that's an amazing statistic. And uh, most of them, 97% uh, of them, will post uh, on a review site or make a comment about that on social media. So I think if we don't get ahead on the social media side, on the reviews, on the on the on the, the physical booking of our of our of our services and our facilities, then I think we'd be left behind. Raquel, I, I give the final word for you. I, I, I'm sure that wherever we are in five years' time, I, I hope fervently we'll we'll be a lot greener as well along the way. Yeah, I guess I I I can. I want three three things really to, to to happen in the next five years. And one is, you know, a creation of this carbon conscious society nearly, starting with industry and following to everyone at their homes. Um, how, you know, being aware of your own environmental impact, being aware of your own carbon emissions, because we all create them. Um, the second thing I really like to see for the industry is this, you know, big collaboration mindset. So where, you know, again, there is no competition with the hotel next door to you, but some sort of a collaboration, not only with other hotels, but with other tourism providers, with our hosting communities, um, to all food suppliers, services providers in your area, just, just more collaboration in general from, from communities. Um, and the third thing I like to see is, and we're already seeing signs of it, it's, it's again, is for the whole industry to sort of rethink and not be afraid to open the conversation about our employee well-being, um, the hours they're expected to work, the pay. And I understand all these things are very, very difficult because hospitality has a huge amount of cost when it comes to, 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 to staff and you need to have high staff levels to provide a, a very good service. But I would like us to really spark that conversation of employees' well-being, uh, mental health, and and you know how how we're treating the people that make our industry happen. Great stuff. And with that, Raquel, I'd like to thank you, Chris, Tom, and David for all your insights on today's discussion in association with Electric Ireland. And thank, of course, all our participants for tuning in today. I hope you found it useful and valuable, and there's plenty of actionable insights for us from all of that. And we'll see you again very soon.